Welcome to Girl Let's Agree to Disagree. I am your host, Jessica Milagros, and we are here with Brent, who is our third evictee. Yep. How are you feeling right now, Brent? Um, I'm, you know, as far as game wise or just overall? over just just give me the whole give me the whole spiel. How do you um, feel overall? It it I feel like they say it's a it's just game, but you know, there's a little bit of personal. I always think that, you know, there's a little mix of both. I've been in the house. So like, I feel like there's always, you, you kind of play personally, but it is also a game. So, but how do you feel overall? Overall, I feel just like a normal day. Um, like I said, I am in past interviews and in, in the house as well. Um, I truly was in it for the experience. I really didn't care about the money or, or the perks that come afterwards or the opportunities to come afterwards. Um, going into something like that, I didn't think I was going to be an anomaly. You know, I knew I was going to be a target and, you know, I was just that. So I was prepared for the betrayal, the deceit, the, the game getting messy and not going my way, but it's all about perspective. And I think if you have a good perspective going in, you can have one coming out. Um, and that's something I, uh, you know, believe in highly. So yeah, I mean, all those people in there, I think the cast, and you probably said this for your season too, our cast, it was amazing. They really, everyone was just so animated and, and, and enthusiastic and charismatic and charming. It was it was amazing uh, experience to be a part of. Um, so there is no, you know, bad blood as far as any bitter taste in my mouth or me not liking anyone. Um, I know who they are really, as far as I lived with them yeah. and what they were saying um, when you get into that diary room. Yes, is a lot of truth, but at the same time, it's a lot of, you know, cameras are on, you know, ready, set, action. So you can't really look too much into that because when you forget the cameras are ro rolling 24-7, you know you're, you're acting the, the way you would normally act at home. Yeah, uh, maybe the conversation is different, but um, yeah, so I don't take any of those diary. I mean, those goodbye messages to heart. Good. Um, that's great. Let's let's go back to what you said before. You said you came in knowing that you were going to be a threat. Mm -hmm. And so in the beginning, the, actually the very first, you know, the first episode, I mean, even in the live feeds, we see that you were originally targeted, um, you know, by Frenchie. Um, but you had this way of being able to kind of charm yourself out of that, right? You were, you, you were able to talk to him. And all of a sudden, it went from being a target to being his close to like right hand man, right? And you were kind of, in some people would say that you were even kind of directing his, uh, his HOH. Yes. So um, now that, you know, obviously you're, you're out of the house now, but looking at it from there, why did that um, strategy not work going into the third week? And why do you think you went home? Um, I went home because it's just a logical choice as far as, especially everything brewing in the back um, that I didn't know about the cookout and the Royal Flush and maybe others that I'm not aware of. Um, Frenchy was not part of my game plan, nor I don't think uh, me to him. Unfortunately, my back was against the wall. As soon as he saw me, I was his target, like you said. So I had to change my whole strategy. And the only way to do that and get off of, uh, you know, his radar was to basically say and do everything I needed to say and do to make it look as though um, the, the, the respect and, and, and loyalty was real, but, mm -hmm. A lot of the things I didn't agree with, and I'm pretty sure I was very vocal about that with what he was doing mm -hmm. and targeting everyone and everyone kept becoming safe and then putting people up and then making alliances with them. It was just so messy and I had to clean up a lot of it to try to get both Alyssa, Kylan and Derek X safe. Um, and obviously Travis was the result of that. Mm -hmm. You take Frenchie out, I make it a lot farther. Um, I think I would have been able to play my original strategy, but week three, I mean, it just makes sense. I couldn't shake um, Frenchie's HOH reign. I couldn't shake people thinking I was part of a lot of the chaos in the house. 
Um, I couldn't shake or get that taste out of a lot of the house guests' mouth. And um, there's unfortunately nothing I could have really have done yeah. because everyone kept saying I was a threat and a competitive threat. And, and I didn't even do anything yet. I wasn't yeah. even there. Like, uh, you know, I had one physical competition and I got sick the second round. Yeah. Um, so it, I guess, you know, but you, but you coming into the week, you thought you weren't going home, right? So you, cause it looked very much like you had it in the bag. You had your numbers. You didn't, you know, want the veto to be used on you. There were so much where you felt like you were very confident in, in staying. So, so walk me through that. How, how, how did it change? When did it change? And when did you find out that you were being blindsided. Okay, so my philosophy in life is hope for the best, prepare for the worst. Long story short, obviously, I'm hopeful, law of attraction, I'm a big believer in it, wanted to put those affirmations and everything like that out into the universe and all that positive energy. Um, but I'm also a big believer in preparing for the worst. And mm -hmm. I'm many things, but an idiot is not one of them. And um, I can read a room pretty well as far as uh, especially living with them 24 seven people were happy that shouldn't have been happy people were at ease that shouldn't have been at ease people were um, you know talking to people that were most likely going to be getting uh, bamboozled as well all those things just equate to you know something is not adding up and I'm most likely you know what's that What's that uh, saying? It's like, if you're not getting the joke in the room, you will probably are the joke or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. like that. Um, so yeah, I mean, I put myself in their shoes and I have been since uh, nominations and I would have got rid of me too. Um, it just makes the most sense. And when you can put yourself in someone else's perspective or shoes, you can see like, okay, there's every reason to get rid of me um, because I was going to do exactly what they were doing to me. So it's like, yeah. how can I be upset about that? Right. It's like, okay, you lied to me. You betrayed me. You made a million promises to a million different peoples, but I did that too. So it's like, am I really going to be upset that you got rid of me before I got to do it? No, that's yeah. smart. You know, you're going to put a match out before it becomes a fire. So yeah. when did you, when did you realize it? Cause I know that there was a, a, a conversation that you had with Whitney and Whitney was trying to kind of maybe, you know, let you know, Hey, like the things you're saying aren't really going well with the house. Like, was any of that like clicking? Were you like with the different conversations of people trying to tell you that things weren't going to work out? So Whitney's a very sensitive person, even though she tries to tell me that she's not. She can dish it, but she can't take it. And we conflicted and we butted heads. And if it wasn't a team aspect, I wouldn't have chose to work with her just because our personalities don't align. Now, um, the conversation she was having with me since we had a past as far as butting heads registered in my mind as, yes, I'm a blunt person. I don't believe in sugarcoating. I don't believe in waste, wasting people's time. If I'm not interested, I'm not interested. If this you ask me this question, you're going to get the answer. That's how I've always been. I'm a straight mm -hmm. shooter. And it, she doesn't like that. And she never did. She was never receptive to it. She wants me to you know, be a lot more of like, softer with pulling the band-aid rather than me pulling it fast she would have loved for me to soak it in water get it nice and, and then slowly pull it off that's mm -hmm. just not how I am so it didn't click that she was trying to tell me the house was betraying me it was more of like we've had a conflicting past and my delivery was a lot of the reason for that mm -hmm. and her being a little bit more on the sensitive side so I thought more or less it was a conversation that had to do with a uh, rekindling a relationship as far yeah. as on a personal level than a game level. If that makes Got sense. It. Is there anything that you feel like you could have done differently to stay this week? Um, no, <laughs> truly no. Once you have a target on your back, it stays there. And when legit every single gentleman in the house, besides a uh, big D, but I already know big D was planning to get me out as well. He was lying to me the whole time. When all of them are targeting you, yeah. You have to safely assume that Alyssa with Christian or uh, Kylan with the rest of his uh, friends that are female in the house are going to be going along with that as well. Yeah. Uh, like I said, I'm many things, but an idiot is not one of them. And when I know that 
you know, if the house is against me, I know. So that's why my face, sorry, America. I mean, I know you wanted to see me get all flustered and bothered, but at the end of the day, I know who I am and what I could provide. And I yeah. played the game with what I was given. And that was a target on my back. Yeah. Well, you know what? Thank you. Um, thank you for the interview. I'm wishing you the best of luck. Are you going to be watching the rest of the season? Yes. I'm not going to watch prior, but I will watch. Okay. Rest. Okay. Well, we will hold you on to it. Um, well, good luck with the rest of everything and the rest of your interviews. Thank you so much. Appreciate you. Thank you.